This is the Bill Squire Show. Yeah, hello. hello there we hello. go. I like that. Are we are we live? Yeah, we're recording. Oh, good. Let uh, me uh, introduce the episode. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Bill Squire Show. I am your host, Bill Squire, and we're getting things started this week with my buddy, Marty, and I want Marty right now to tell you to come see me at Hilarity. So, Marty, sell my show so that it sells out. Tell me the date first, Bill. August 13th through 15th. August 13th through 15th. Bill Squire co-headlining with Mike Paramore, right? Yes. And whose feature? I don't think there's a feature. I think it's just going to be an opener. Who's hosting? I don't know that either. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I've seen them both, and they're both very funny. Mike uh, uh, does stuff about what things he does to kids, but it's not as bad as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then what? What? why should they see me? They should see Bill because Bill is awesome and he's going to help me find a place to live. But I'm also very funny, maybe? You're, you're also talking? very funny. I don't like having to put words in your mouth. I want you to... And he may use his humor to humor someone into not thinking that I'm not totally crazy and uh You're making this all about you getting me. a place, not about... Yeah, well, it is about me getting a place. I'm in <laughs> panic mode. I, I went to the bank today and um, took out $320 before... Uh, this bill that it's the last bill on my credit report. Yeah, I would. They were gonna go through and pay it uh, today or tomorrow, uh-huh. and uh, uh, but I I can't. I took the money out and then I uh, called my uh, bank card and lost. Okay. So I I I canceled it basically on them. But I did that because I wanted the money so I could find a place to live with the money. I was so eager, but now I think I'm going to wait till October 1st. Okay, well, um, you are... So you're moving out. Yes, I have to. Why? Because he thinks the bugs are friendly bugs. All right, well, you got to explain. There's well, okay. a whole situation. The, so you have bugs I, in your I, I, uh, kitchen. I, I get stuff from a church twice a year. Uh-huh. And they get, you know I'm a picky eater, so most of it I don't eat. I just mainly like it for the gift cards. And I, the box of stuff sits there, and my roommate constantly says he's going to eat it. Yeah. He wouldn't want me to throw it out. Um, but anyway. Um, so, so you got bu- this big box of food from a church, and, and you the, just left it there. I left it there, and the bugs started getting on it. And I threw out both boxes, uh-huh. and I sprayed it with Raid. Okay. And uh, then today I find out. Well, the other day I bought paper towels, and the paper towels mysteriously disappeared, which makes me think my roommate's going to sell them or something. Uh, so I didn't have paper towels to put the the get the the grease from the bacon in the in the microwave. So grease bacon grease got over the microwave, and the bugs infested it. Oh, that's pretty gross. And uh, there's like hundreds of bugs in the microwave, so you can't use the microwave anymore. So you were cooking bacon in the microwave? Yeah. And anyway, uh, there's so many things that are gross about this story. Actually, I don't want to hear any more of the story, but you got to move. About I have to move. Yeah. Okay. Because so he you, thinks the bugs are friendly bugs. Why does he think they're friendly bugs? He said, "I said I'll get the raid and we'll spray them," and he said, he "said no, they're friendly bugs. They'll 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 dissipate and go off on their own, not thinking that they're just going to go infest something else. Like that's what they're going to do." Yeah, that's pretty gross. Okay. Well, I would. Uh, where do you think you're going to move? I'm going to look on roommates.com. I already got a page on roomies.com. I'm having technical difficulty with roommates.com. Um, you also just got a new job, right? Yes, I just got a new job. Uh, what's the new job? The um, COVID uh, temperature screening at uh, the Ford plant. And so you are doing that job. Actually, you know, another uh, guy in town is doing that. Hot Carl does that too. He doesn't do that anymore. And he already quit? I don't know. <laughs> well, so you're doing COVID screening. Yeah. Uh, do you have COVID? No. Okay, good. But it, it pays well because it's high risk because we can come in contact with people with COVID. Yeah, so what do you do? You just take temperatures? and uh, They walk in front of the machine, and there's cameras on the right and cameras on the left, and there's a computer on the left, computer on the right, mm-hmm. and it reads their temperature, and you... Uh, you tell them you're good, and they have to show uh, an app that they 
um, or the, that they typed into their phone showing that they, they answer no to all four questions about COVID. And if they don't have that, you have to write their name in the book. Okay. Have you had to write anybody's name in the book? Yeah, but some names are already on there, and you just look it up and you, you mark it, and some names you, you write. How often are people coming to work getting, te- like, where you go, okay, you can't come to work today because you potentially have COVID? It hasn't happened to me yet. Okay. So do you think this is actually working? It's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure people are staying away because they answered yes to some of the four questions. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's good that they stay away because you should, you know, not go to work if you're the sick. The girl that uh, worked with me today, she had COVID and she was out for a while. Oh, yeah? They're, how much does it pay you? Eighteen seventy-five an hour. And how many days a week are you doing it? Four days a week, Monday through Thursday, 4.30 to 6.30. And I just picked up a shift eight hours on... Uh, Sunday, 4 to noon, which I just finished. Damn, you're killing it. Yeah, so I'm working 16 hours this week. Yeah, last week uh, someone uh, got in a car accident. Their husband got in a car accident, and they had to stay with their husband. So uh, I I, pay, I had 22 hours last week. But you know what? And they, you're still working at McDonald's. I, I just Saturday was my last day. Okay, so you're just going to do so this. So I'm just doing this so I can pick up the shifts because yeah. I don't want to be like, oh, no, I'm working at McDonald's. Right, because that already better. happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for you, man. I'm happy for you. Yeah. So hopefully, is there a chance you could just find a place on your own and not have a roommate? Or do you? Yeah, have... that's possible. The biggest thing What's I your the biggest thing I want I want to spend five hundred dollars a month. Okay. Uh, but I want parking. Yeah. Because I I'm a bad parallel parker, but I managed to do it out here today. I don't know how I nice. did it. There's some places uh we can look at, and we'll, we'll help. Uh, I'll help you find a place where you can. Uh, Get a you know an I, affordable. I just see a parking lot. It doesn't have to be covered, right? Right, right, right. Um, so, what else? How's the girl situation? Well, I'm losing weight. I lost nine pounds. That's good. Well, that's all going to get wiped out with this pizza and coke. Oh no! But it's okay. It's worth it, though, right? Yeah. You need because I'm relaxing. stressed. I'm stressed because of the bugs. Yeah. Um, would you? I actually want to show you something. Uh, and I think you'll like it. I want to see if I can find it on YouTube. And I, I, I'm trying to find a house from Habitat Humanity. I'm volunteering with them, mm-hmm. but they but, but they nixed all their volunteers for now because of the COVID. Oh yeah. So let's see. There we go. This isn't two girls one cup, is it? No, 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 no. This is very different than that. But I want to see if you would like this because you do you like ketchup. Yes, I like ketchup and french fries. Okay, you like ketchup on french fries. Do you like milk? Yes, but I don't like ketchup and milk. Don't tell me they're doing ketchup and milk. Well, we're going to watch it on the screen back here, okay? Okay. All right, so there's no audio on this, so I'll narrate it as it goes. All right, here it goes. So it's a hot dog getting drilled out, Once again, and then you put some ketchup in the milk, stir it up with the hot dog, and then you drink the ketchup milk through the <laughs> hot dog straw. <laughs> Are you going to throw up? Oh, no, no. That's sick. That's sick. (laughs) Oh, that was the best reaction, I think. Uh, I really enjoyed enjoyed your reaction quite a bit. Uh, Let me me get Oh, and I, I mentioned on Rumi's that I do a podcast with you. And if they want to know more about with me, yeah, they, they on the can, microphone. They, if they want to know more about me, they can listen to the podcast with Bill Squire. I don't know if that's the best way to get a roommate. Yeah. Um, what am I trying to do here? Yeah, I think we can uh, just move on now. I think we'll get going with the episode. I think that's all we'll do today. Anything okay. else you want to add? Well, uh, I have a I have a caseworker, and I may have her help me f- trying to find a place to live. But I'm not going to live in a group home again because the food is not what to my liking. You don't like the food at the group home? No, because you know I I don't like any food except my fu- food. Why is that? You're That's just what picky. I eat. I'm I picky. think you just need to expand. No, I'm not going to expand. I'm well, yeah, I don't think expand. the group home is a good place for you because I feel like you you don't. Uh, there i think being on your own is the best situation yeah but you got to keep things clean you got to keep things nice you gotta you gotta take care of yourself okay okay i'll help you find a place all right so coming up next uh raj suresh uh comedian and uh 
we talk about what it's like to kind of be a world citizen. He, he's lived all over the world, and uh, he's from India originally. Uh, I did a show with him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a funny dude, and it's a pretty interesting conversation, so enjoy it right now. And don't forget to go see me this weekend at Hilarities. That's August 13th through 15th. They're doing everything to keep uh, it all nice and, and safe. They're, they're following the protocols and going above and beyond to, to make sure that it's an enjoyable and safe experience. So go, go to ticket uh, to get tickets, you go to hilarities.com and then uh, that's all. Let's get going. That's it. Let's get going. Let's get that pizza. Yeah. Now, please welcome this week's guest, Raj Suresh. Hey, what's up, Bill? Not much, man. How you doing? Doing okay, considering the times. So Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird times for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, you got hit by it in a pretty different way than other people because uh, Raj is originally from India. He's lived in America for a little over 10 years now and he's kind of moved all over the U.S. He lived in Arkansas for a while. He was up in Cleveland for a while and then he made the move as a comedian from Cleveland to L- uh, to New York City and uh, that was in February of 2020. Yeah, it was, uh, my lease started March 1 and I left New York yeah. like two weeks later. <laughs> then... Uh... And then I was gone for like three months and then finally showed back up like a month ago. And yeah, decided to, to pack it in for the time being and we'll go back whenever things open up. Yeah. So you were literally there for two weeks and then you're like, I'm out. Dude, I think I paid like four months worth of rent and I lived in that house for about 30 days all, all the time combined. That's brutal. Yeah, yeah, that, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts. My, uh, uh, it's not like it's cheap rent. Where where was your apartment? It was right. It was in Hell's Kitchen, so like forty seventh and tenth. Times. So you were on Manhattan. I was in the island. Yeah, on the island. Like, yeah, I could see Times Square from where I was at. It's like two avenues away. Um, and when I text, I texted my landlord. I was like, "Hey, man, like, could you do anything on rent?" And he's like, "We're all going through some stuff." And I was like, "You are on yeah. five apartment buildings and park a BMW outside." Um, so yeah, so he he gave me a tiny break and he's like this this is for this month only mm-hmm. and i was like why didn't you like he was like i'm only like i didn't even think the bank only gave me a five to ten percent uh discount on my on my more on my payments on loans so i didn't yeah. even think residents would care and i was like dude ten percent of my rent is a huge number in new york city yeah yeah uh that's that's a huge number anybody especially when you're going through that situation Right. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, so where'd you, where'd you go from New York City? You went to uh, Arkansas. I went to Atlanta, and I'll go to Arkansas. So, I'm gonna go down there in about a week or two. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do my birthday down there. Okay. What were you doing in uh, Atlanta? Who, who are you staying with there? My, my sister's down here. Okay, so you're just kind of crashing with her for a bit, yeah. and yeah. yeah. And it's been good. It's been good to like catch up because we've lived in two different countries a lot of our lives. Um, yeah. I'm literally doing the day of like my birthday with her because for the last 10 years, I have not, I don't think I've celebrated a, a birthday with family because they've always been overseas. Yeah. Uh, that's. Um, your parents were here, was it last year or the year before? They, they were here like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember meeting them and uh, they, were, they were in town for a little while. And like that, that's such a difficult thing that I have a small experience with that from being in the philippines for two years and not really having any contact with my parents but to have your parents be that far away for that long like that that big part of your life that's pretty that's pretty crazy how do you deal with that uh i mean so when i was 15 we all like the last time we lived as a four-person unit under one roof was when i was like 14 or 15 and then after that like things were getting a little bit dicey so i grew up in the middle east and arab springs was starting to kick off um, and so my, my dad really didn't want my, like my high school education interrupted or having to move in between mm-hmm. like the two year period. So he was like, all right, you guys go to India. So me and my mom, and my sister moved there. And then he would come visit us for like, you know, like every month or so, or every two months. So I kind of got used to it. Cause that first year I lived on campus, they had like a hostel for boys. Um, so mm-hmm. I lived, I lived on campus. I hated it, dropped a ton of weight. The food was garbage grades dropped and then that second year i started living at home but it was a 90 minute commute each way so that prepped me for college in america like i was just yeah. i'd already had a taste of what it was like to live in a dorm live far away from home um but yeah seven like 
from 17 through about 2021 when I graduated, that was, if I didn't have better friends, it would have been a much shittier experience. Well, it's a good thing that you had those friends, but still that's, that, that does kind of uh, give you a nice patina for what the world is about. And you can kind of see, you know, you, you can go one way. I think that that can make you open your eyes and, and make you want to treat people better yeah. or it makes you bitter and kind of uh, shut off to the world. I'm a little and bit I feel like you're the, <laughs> Yeah. Well, but I mean, yeah. you do get experiences from that that are going to, yeah, definitely going to put you in, in one camp or the other. Like I definitely got that from the Philippines where there's some things that I'm all about right. and like, yeah, people, people, people. And there are things where I'm like, uh, eh, that let's not talk about that. I'm a little angry about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, the, the first couple of years was, I mean, it's college. So it's, it's a lot of fun, but it was a lot of hard work. And I knew immediately, like, I'm not, a pro, I'm not in the same position as a lot of other kids. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw super bad, for the first time, I was like, is this what Americans think like college is supposed to be? Because in India, it's a little bit different, you know, like, or I know Superbad said in high school, but like the whole summer, they're talking about what college is going to be like. And then, like, yeah. American, so all the American culture that I'd absorbed overseas gave me a very different, I don't, I just, I had a very different cultural lens over what this was supposed to be. Right. But, yeah. Well, and movies are going to make it seem much different than I, I think it actually Actually, yes. I didn't go to college, so I don't really yeah. have any idea of what it was like. But, you know, I like other than going to a party or visiting a couple friends here now and then. But I wasn't really part of that campus life. Where did you end up going to school? I went to Penn State. So it's like in dead center of Pennsylvania. There's nothing else there. There's just the school. <laughs> I think, you know, the football team is, I want to say, supposedly great because I never watched the game because I didn't know the rules for like the first year. It wasn't a big deal. Oh, nice. And it was like insane to me that people were paying hundreds of dollars to watch 18 year olds play a game. It, it blows my mind. College football blows my mind. Like I kind of get it at the pro level, yeah. but I still don't get the, the, you know, the prices and stuff like that. But uh, that diehard fan for a college program yeah. is very, it's almost upsetting to me. Cause I'm just like, you're, these are kids, man. Take it easy on them. Yeah. And, and it, like, it's okay to be a fan. I'm not saying you can't be a fan, but it's those people that live and die with it where they're like cursing at the TV and freaking out over uh, children trying to play this game so they can get an education. And they're like, their Saturdays are spent just living for that. Yeah. Uh, it makes me sad. It's, it's like I had friends that were super into it and we're like, yeah. you know, we would go to like the dining hall and like the guy would be like, oh, that's like Sean Lee. And I'm like, yeah, but he's also 18, 19 years old. Right. I I did I couldn't for the life of me figure out why this was amazing. They're like, oh, he might play for a big team someday. And I think he's like starting lineup of like the Cowboys uh for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you are. But I and, and I get that, like them like knowing that they can go on to bigger things is is pretty cool. So I get that kind of fandom. But you I mean you grew up watching cricket, I believe. Yeah. I I watch a lot of cricket, a lot of soccer. So yeah, that to me was I guess that's the cultural difference. But mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's not like, you know, college soccer then makes you a pro star. Like if you're a pro, you just turn pro. There's there's not often you don't have to go yeah. to college to do that. Well, they set up a whole situation yeah. here in America because they can make so much money off of college sports. Yeah. And it I'm with you. They, if you're good enough to go pro, go pro. We shouldn't be using this as a way to line the pockets of all these colleges. Just let the colleges be what they are. Yeah, you know, for education, it shouldn't be the way it is. Uh, but when it comes to cricket, I, I've tried to watch a little bit. I actually think it's a very interesting game, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like there's some pretty awesome athletic moments in it. Uh, but it just—it's so long. Watch the 2020 version; it's shorter than an NFL game, or it's as as long as an NFL. Game. Okay, so they they updated it finally. Yeah, so they're, they're, the long version of the game is called Test Cricket because it runs five days, and every like yeah. it's like playoff series. Every night you go to bed, obviously, but then yeah. you do it again the next day. Um, and it's like innings based, so it's a little more baseball-y. But mm -hmm. if you are really looking, like then they have the one day format, which it's as its name suggests, played in one day. And an over is six deliver like six pitches, and if you have a thirty over game, each side is doing like a hundred and eighty pitches. Okay. So the twenty, that. the twenty is the shortest. You do yeah. twenty overs where it's a hundred and twenty pitches, and then you're done. 
and and that's a lot more exciting because guys, if you're out, you're out. You don't come back. Yeah. And, so they're just and you get ten they, outs, so everyone's going for because they have such a small number of pitches to make the biggest score. Yeah. Well, I have to I have to check that out because uh, I I have watched a little bit and I I do think it's an interesting game and you know with spending as much time at home right now like I like live sports so I'm watching a lot of NBA I'm watching a lot of baseball and uh, maybe I'll take this time to learn about cr- cricket because I'm kind of getting fed up with baseball yeah. I love baseball but it's also one of those things where God damn is the rule stupid. Yeah, there's a lot of like uh, you know infield fly rules and like shit. Yeah. like when I first started playing co-ed softball, everyone thought I was like the biggest idiot in the world, and I was like, okay, you name one state in my country, just one, I, and you're like, if you want to get mad at me for not knowing like what the infield fly rule is or that I need to wear a glove because I hated doing that, it made no yeah. sense. Cricket is played. Cricket, you play with bare hands. Bare yeah. hands, like yeah, like just a tough. Like a like it's a tough person sport. Your hands callous, and that's how you become better. <laughs> what about uh, is the, is there a catcher in yeah, cricket? It's called a keeper. So the, the keeper, the, do they have? He's uh, the only they, guy. Yeah, that's what. Okay, that's that's the one that I can see that would need it. Yeah, is him. Uh, but nobody but, else. Yeah. Uh, the the batsmen do. They have like pretty heavily padded gloves on their knuckles. Okay. Uh, just in case you get wrapped, you, yeah, that's not a fun. They they wear a lot of gear, a lot more gear than baseball guys do. Yeah, that's true. So there, I mean, there's there's stark differences, but it's it's an interesting sport. And if you can, you know, check out some. If you haven't ever really watched any cricket, just go on YouTube and watch cricket highlights. And some of these catches that these guys are making yeah, are insane. incredible. Yeah. And they're doing it barehanded. That's what makes it even more impressive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's no tough. There. Um. You're kind of getting because you you're Indian. You grew up in the Middle East, like you said. You you you've been around, and uh, one thing that gets under your skin is when you see people taking your culture and kind of turning it into uh, some sort of business, but without any respect to the culture. Yeah, it's like this weird cultural profiteering that completely divorces the country of origin from it, mm-hmm. right? And um, and I, I want to be careful about this because I, I do think there is a necessity for cultural shifts to occur and people to be interested. And I don't want those people to feel like, oh, shit, like I fucked up by liking chai. Like that's not the. the right, thing. right. The, it's, the, it's the respect to yeah. for, the, for, for where it came from. And uh, I was just going to be like, because I, I know anytime you wear blue jeans, you're like, I got these. And I respect that they were worn by the 49ers right. when they're searching for gold because uh, you respect the culture that <laughs> beans came from. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I mean, right? Like I made this point when I, I went off on, on Instagram about this, but I made this point where it's like every single – yeah, I get mad when you have a yoga studio and no Indian people in the entire chain, top to bottom, no, no Indian customers, mm-hmm. no Indian management, no Indian ownership, and it's all from India. But at the same time, I acknowledge that when I'm in India and I'm eating pasta, a white dude from Italy did not sell it to me. Right. Like it's it's entirely Indian owned. Right. But in, in the, the what it comes down to is having knowledge and respect for the culture it came from and in, in sure. not just using it as a cliche or as a, a product that you can just cash in on. Uh, yeah. Then you were saying something about like the, the greeting or the, the way they end the classes, they say, yeah, I know how to. They say namaste. That's that's yeah. what I have always heard. So I don't know how to actually pronounce it. So I want you to teach me to pronounce it correctly. Yeah, it's namaste, which is like hummus, like namaste. Mm. And then the T is flat. It's like, I don't know if glottal stop is the right. I don't think that is, but it's a flat T. It's namaste. Um, okay. And and it's more, it's, it has more in common to do with hello than it does goodbye. And Indian people don't even say namaste. Like, it's all... I, when I've heard it said by young people, it's more tongue in cheek because young Indians tend to say hi to each other. Like we speak English just as much as we speak Hindi or whatever right. other regional language. Uh, so why the fuck it's said at the end of the class? That to me is, that's got to be purely some kind of. It's like um, marketing. Yeah. It's just, do you feel more spiritual? Because, and that's the, that's the other thing. I, If people think that India is associated with mysticism and, you know, snake charming, being exotic and finding yourself. I've got a lot of news for those folks. Like if you go to <laughs> India, you're probably getting robbed within five minutes of being there. If you walk around expecting the world to be hunky dory, it's a, 
it's a country of a billion and a half fucking people and everyone is trying to survive a third of us below the poverty line and everyone is trying to accelerate right we've only been free at this point for 80 years so mm-hmm. these are people that are enormously hard working and they want self determination now more than ever and they're hyper aware of i think where they've been traditionally taken advantage of during deal points um and so the tricky part for me is when you when white people visit india they're kind of hero worship and then there's this sub faction where they also are targets for that reason right like if they are tourists you're going to have guys trying to sell them or if they go somewhere they're probably going to get ripped off but what i'm saying is that that happened a lot in the philippines and because i knew their language yeah. uh i could go into in like play dumb at first and then once i heard them like talking shit and yeah. be like well don't say that because yeah. i understand what you're saying and they're like ah oh, yeah. you're one so of you the- spoke tagalog pretty well yeah i was i was very fluent in tagalog oh. like I, I if like i had plenty of people tell me that like oh you sound like you're you know you're from you here. know you're different. yeah not like i was you know not like a filipino but yeah I, I, I was proficient in it to the point where they understood what i was saying and they speak to me comfortably i lost it like i still i can still speak it but it's not like it was it was second nature for a while my grandparents lived down there so i spent like two summers three summers as a there's a ton of indians yeah yeah so uh my favorite thing from down there is ube ice cream i don't know if you've ever tried that but cornetto used to make this version where it was just ube is like um is ube and taro the same thing uh i don't know but i i know cornetto so wait ube and what it's just like vanilla ice cream but they would put ube in it like there would be like a vanilla and um, it's like purple. It's a bright purple. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that shit was Did awesome. I pronounce it wrong? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. But see, this is what I mean because I know, like, I'm coming from a place of appreciation and fond remembrance and nostalgia for something that was so uniquely uh, Filipino at a time yeah. in my life. And so I know that there's people that love what they think they know about India, and I want them to think those things, but also balance and temper that reality because what it ends up doing is putting indian people in this place where we're never going to live up to your expectations right and so the moment i'm no longer the model minority or like this nice immigrant th- this guy that's mystical and has prayer beads and has deep answers for your life you know it puts us at a crux cuz now it becomes how do i deal with this culture and this person right um if all i ever knew about Filipino people was like this ice cream then it wouldn't really be a fair representation of them. No, but it's it's one of those things where if the golden rule is anything that makes sense to you then you just treat people how you want to be treated. So yeah. and and that makes it simple to be like okay, I don't know a lot about Raj's culture, but I'm going to be polite to him because I want him to be polite to me. I'm going to treat him with respect because I want him to treat me with respect. I'm going to Tell him what I'm appreciate about his culture, but also would like to hear what he has to say so I can learn more. So that's that's kind of how I, I approach the situation where you can show that appreciation, but at the same time, uh, be open to learn more about it, which mm-hmm. uh, we can give everybody a little. They know how to pronounce uh, namaste. Yeah. I, I fucked it up. Uh, <laughs> namaste. Namaste. There. And uh, uh, give us a, a statement. So some other uh, Indian guys like name one state. Because I can't know your rules. Uh, what's what's a state? Is New Delhi a state or a city? That's a that's a city. Yeah, this, I thought. So. Is, I feel stupid now. I should know this. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> New Delhi is the capital. Um, okay, that's the thought. But the state I'm from is called Tamil Nadu, which is also Tamil is the language that I speak, but I also speak Hindi and I also speak English. Okay, uh, so how many then, how many dialects are there in India? I think there's something like 50 national languages officially. Because India is a country that used to be 500 princely kingdoms, and we're only yeah. we only added a 29th state a couple of years ago. For the longest time, we were 28 states, but each of these states. So my neighboring state, I can't speak their language. That's like, crazy to me. It's different enough that I don't understand it. There's, I mean, that is in in a way. If I go to Mississippi, I'm like I don't know <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah the the difference is we as a nation are very old so people have evolved in these tiny pockets over a long period of time in complete isolation from each other right but when you look at you know how white america has evolved that's a relatively recent phenomenon and it's it's something that americans have very little 
appreciation for and really don't understand either right. is how new this country is compared to countries yeah. in the world. And it's also a pretty big experiment still here in America where it really is a melting pot and there's more things being thrown into that pot and all the people that got comfortable for a short period are like, oh, there's more people coming here from other countries and they want to get in on this and they get offended by that. And it's very strange to me to, to uh, be upset about someone trying to do the same thing that your ancestors did. Yeah. And I think that I've got, you know, if I'm being completely honest with myself, I think I get mad about the yoga thing and the chai thing for like, because when I was 9-11 happened when I was 11 and that was when it became, I don't think it was ever cool to be a brown guy. I think it just became a lot less cool. Yeah. Uh, like it became, it became, I mean, the racism that I encountered primarily was people saying things to me about Arab people. Mm -hmm. but they're just, you know, get, I'm getting bucketed in. Um, and I don't think any of the insults are right towards Arab people. I, I don't know. Racism is racism and it's shitty. Right. But I think we've moved from a position now where India is slowly dropping back into this bucket of things that are cool. And, and we're not invited to the table or the conversation or the profits mainly like that. Like yeah. it's like for years, I kind of put up with all this shit and then our moment comes to shine and there's and and this is not just my uh experience as an indian person it happens to a lot of minorities it happens to a lot of people it, it's happening to poor folks from the south whose food is now being elevated to like high cuisine um, yeah. whether they're white or black and they're not invited to it and that's in, it's it will drive sane people insane right and that, i mean that's one thing that they i just thought started watching the sopranos and they're talking about all the cuisine from uh Italy and how it was turned into basically American food and right. uh, profit, you know, they found all that profit from it. So I, I completely understand that. And again, I think it just goes back to it's, it's okay to appreciate and, and profit off the culture, but know where it comes from. And also don't try and straight up steal it. Yeah. You know, like try to, you know, get a partner or something like that. There's, there's, there's ethical ways to do it. I want what I'm hoping doesn't happen is that we end up creating the Olive Garden of Indian food in the next 20 years. I it's going to happen, it, though. I see it happening. You know, it's going to happen, though. It's. it's I mean, it's kind of already like there's there's things that are. You'll see, like there there's a couple of chains that are locally owned and they're Indian, but it's yeah. one of those things where you could see a corporation like buying it up and making it really All you can eat something, like, eat something, or like just you know just really dumbing that down the menu bottomless non-basket like stuff like that all right now that sounds good to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah man i don't know like look whether it's a chai or yoga or whatever the fuck else i would still enjoy watching indians be part of that process because we're we're really diluting what this looks like when it's done badly. And then you end up at a position where you, you go to Starbucks and you order chai and that's what you think chai is. And then when you go buy from actual Indian people, you're like, this shit is like bitter. I don't like it. It doesn't suit my palates. There's not enough sugar. There's too much ginger. So I'm going to leave you a shitty Yelp review. And now yeah, the and that's that created and pioneered this thing has to rebrand themselves. And that's why when you go to Indian restaurants, they're mostly, if you go to like eat out of a buffet, is bland as fuck because they're just trying to service everybody and stuff them full without delivering any flavor that's authentic to the actual cuisine. Right. And what's the, what's the, like the main, cause I know a lot of the, the, the more traditional Indian food is very spicy. Yeah. And uh, what, where does that fall? Like in your culture? Yeah. Uh, why do you like your mouth to be on that much fire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's, well, ref, like I would flip it and say, uh, you know, why did you guys cook potatoes and fucking meat all the time? Like, <laughs> like they're we, so good. They're so but, good. Dude. That's the thing. They like, work with our, they work. Options. Well, I, honestly, a lot of it has to do with the uh, environment that we grew up in. So exactly. you, could, you could grow up potatoes and you could grow and you could, you could have uh, livestock and you could take care of those rather easily in England and uh, all of Europe. Yeah. Well, for us, it's the same thing. Like, my great-grandma has a little farm in India. 
and everything grows. You don't really have to do anything. The, the weather is just right. Um, the trees will drop fruit, the fruit will die, and that will essentially turn into to new trees. So everything from like nutmeg to jackfruit foods and fruits and spices that you guys have never heard of. I've seen like, have you ever seen turmeric as it's growing out of the ground as opposed to like a powder in a jar? Like that's what we're dealing with. Right. And the, I, other, I, the other part I've never, I've never seen it in uh, plant form. I've only seen it in like, you yeah. know. A, it just looks like green bottle. beans coming out of the ground. You wouldn't know it's turmeric because it's the roots you want. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so for us, like even Indian cuisine, almost all of the Indian restaurants that you see in America, or at least the bulk of them, are North Indian. And and so the cuisine I eat at home is, you won't find it in restaurants easily. So it's a lot of rice. It's closer to Thai food in some ways. Uh, mm-hmm. Very sweet, sour. There's a lot of gravy esque and not as much bread. Whereas if you look at North and Western India, they border Iran and Pakistan and the Persians and the Mughals all came from that side of the world. So, that so that's going to have more of the influence there. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have more flatbread. You're going to have more, more chicken, more meat, um, just, just as a general rule. So, yeah. And, and you're a vegetarian, correct? <laughs> right. Yeah. I've tried the meat though. It just wasn't you, for me. You just didn't like it because you didn't grow up eating it. I so the first time I ate meat I was about eight. So my folks have always been vegetarian, but I went to school and this kid had he had hot dogs. Uh-huh. Fuck, they looked delicious. And so I asked my mom, I was like, "Hey, can I like try these?" And she's like, "Look, life is going to be easier if you're not a vegetarian. I'm not going to cook any of it for you, but I could find some." But and they literally did. Like they found a lady that would come over and cook like meat based meals. Mm-hmm. And like, I didn't, I basically didn't, I hated McDonald's. I didn't like anything except hot dogs. And then at a certain point, my, my, um, I went back to gr- my great grandma's farm. They have a bunch of animals on there and they don't kill the animals. The animals plow the land. Yeah. And that's when I learned where meat came from. And that was the last time I ate meat. That was it for you. You're done. I was like, oh, it's our pets. We're killing our pets for lunch. Yeah. You're killing your, uh, farm equipment basically. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's also why I think a lot of Indians, from a like a religious standpoint, um, are like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say all of us, but a lot of Indians are Hindu, mm-hmm. and the philosophy is to hurt or kill as little as you can. Um, it's we have some weird rules, like we live by, which most people don't know. It's not like we worship cows. It's like we won't kill anything, and you really don't want to kill the thing that gives you cheese, butter, and tills the land and gives you fertilizer you know and has like yeah no that makes that makes a lot of sense and i get that like it the easier way to say is like oh they worship cows but then they like no this thing gives us so much why would we waste it yeah and that's also continue to give us stuff yeah and i think that's also why we had you know so many people conquer india over so much uh, over such a long period of time and we just kind of let them stay because we were nice people (laughs) probably yeah non-confrontational yeah yeah, so it, it. I mean, at the same time, like again, Western India is where you'll find the the warfaring side mm-hmm. of our country because the South is so deep; it's by the water. Um, you're not. It's not as accessible. So right. the Western frontier is all. It's all land. On the east, we have mountains that protect us from the, the Chinese. Um, so the West is really where you find like bigger. The general. The general. I guess stereotype. If I'm going to generalize, is the Texas of India is in the Northwest. Like okay. People are bigger and stronger. And they're much more comfortable with just like, you know, having a brawl to sort something yeah, out. Like you said, it, it's very much topographical because they were in a place where they had to defend themselves more versus a place where you guys were, you know, separated by the mountains. You're going to have a little bit more peace and because it's going to be just getting over there is going to be treacherous. Yeah and dangerous so that people will tend to leave that area alone and it's funny that you compare it to texas where there really hasn't been anybody in a very long time coming in there trying to mess things up but they they still act like there's a, a war going on all the time yeah. and they always act like they got to defend themselves and it's it's very interesting to have yeah, that cool. reality where you just that's just built in and not uh really earn the way it happens in a country that's been around as long as India. Yeah. And it's reflected in the diet. Like you get guys eating meat and trying to get bigger. Yeah. In the South, it's like a lot of rice. 
everything grows out there. It's, yeah, so I don't know. It's it's Interesting. weird. It's it's weird how history informs your diet and uh, like down to this day. And your diet and your mannerisms and stuff like that. Because I get you know when when Texas was not part of uh, when when there was like you know the, the Alamo and shit like that. But that was so long ago that there's still this like kind of attitude from that era but it's still it's not earned like it used to be so right. it's just it's just this whole i don't know false confidence thing yeah you're inheriting somebody else's beef that doesn't exist yeah. anymore it's a right weird. oh cool man well uh, where can people find you and what do you what are you doing to uh put content out these days you doing uh, a podcast or anything yeah so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna start my when i get out to arkansas because i have pretty much everything I need down there in terms of equipment. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Raj does comedy on every single platform. Um, and yeah, the podcast is going to be called no country for Raj. And it's basically, I sit down and I talk to people from different parts of the world because I haven't figured out where I want to retire yet. So I figured the best way to find out is go talk to a bunch of folks, get their life story and then decide why ultimately India is probably the best anyway. <laughs> well, I like it. I like it. I'll be listening once you get it going. Um, you also have uh, albums on iTunes and Pandora and stuff like that. So just search uh, Raj Suresh S U R E S H uh, R A J is his first name, and uh, he's a very funny comic and uh, uh, just interesting dude all around and a good friend. So it's good to catch up with you a little bit today. Hey, likewise, man. Miss you guys. I'll see you soon. I'm sure. All right, see you around, man. Rolling. Peace. Hey. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, this interview with uh, this week's Alan Cox Show Instagram hottie, uh, Ash. What's up? Not much. How, how are you doing this fine morning? I'm doing good. Just hanging out, relaxing on a nice Cleveland day. Yeah. Um, so you recently, you've been following me for a while and we've interacted a bit. You work with plants, I believe. Um, yeah, I kill plants, plant, so we yeah. have something <laughs> in common there. Yeah, there's some crossover. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what, what do you do with plants exactly? Uh, I work in one of the top 10 growth facilities on the East Coast. So oh, wow. every, yeah, it's huge. Um, everything you see at like the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, that's all coming from us. So that's very cool. Everything you're killing, I start. Wow. Well, uh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. I'm, I'm keeping you in business, business because I keep buying exactly. them in. So uh, keep them going. Okay, okay so I had this one. I, 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 I all the uh, it was like a pointy one. I don't know anything about it. Grandma got it for me, and all the leaves fell off. Uh -huh. Like dried up and fell off. So then it like I pulled off where the leaves were growing from, to hope that they would like restart. Because that's you know I didn't research anything. I just started doing things. Is that a good idea? Uh, not terrible. Um, okay. As long as they're kind of like coming off on their own and you're not like just completely mutilating the yeah, plant. Yeah, they were like that. They, they were like brown yeah. and dead. And so yeah. I'm just trying to give it like a rebirth. And yeah, it's, clean it, it up. It was like real sticky in like the hole. Sorry. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, maybe an aloe. I don't know. You'll have to send me a picture of that one. I might be able to uh, rebring it back. That would be great because it's a really pretty plant. I just uh, I, I think I put it in too direct of sunlight. House plants are very finicky. Yes, they are. That's what I've I've learned, and uh, I I'm not the best at uh, keeping them alive. Which you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. To be fair, I've killed my own share of plants, so everyone does it. Um, as far as what's your favorite plant? Like, ooh, you know, house plant. What's your favorite house plant? Houseplant, probably Monstera, like the big kind of traditional tropical foliage you see on like prints and stuff. Okay. So, so something like that. Plant. What's what's like uh what about like a hanging plant? Because I have a I think it's like a sp spider or a rabbit hair fern that I really hey. love. Hey, yep, I got one of those. Those are nice. Those are very nice. Uh, my girlfriend went to water it one day, and she thought there were spiders crawling out of it. Uh, it's a weird looking plant with all those like, fuzzy weird. hangings on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely throws but, people off. Yeah. It throws people off. But like, so grandma's really into plants and I lived with her for a year and a half. And mm -hmm. so I got a little bit of that. But uh, the one that she had had like nice, thick, like they look like a rabbit's foot. But the one that I have is much younger. So they look a lot more like tarantula legs. 
and Ooh, it's fun. pretty terrifying if you don't know yeah. what you're uh, if you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah, I'm sure you uh, gave her some shit for that one. Yeah, yeah. It's well, she hates spiders anyway. So uh, we actually have an agreement that when I break up with her, if I break up with her, not when. Uh, I was gonna say I just, it. Th I won't even say anything. I'll just have bought a tarantula. Oh. So if she comes over and there's a tarantula, then she knows that it's all done. Definitely a good sign. Yeah, but uh, I don't really want to buy a tarantula. To be perfectly honest. Um, so recently you took some, are they boudoir photos? Yes. Yes. Uh, what made you want to go in that direction? Um, I've done a little bit in the past and mm -hmm. when I say the past, I mean like a decade ago. So, yeah. uh, long time ago. And then my and friend was a studio. Years old, right? I am going on 79 actually. Okay. Well, that's 78 years old. Yeah. So I was right. Well, I <laughs> no, uh, be accurate. Look, you look pretty bad for being 78, to be perfectly I, honest. It's, uh, it's a lot of makeup to get to this point. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, you you did these and you started posting them, and you look mm -hmm. fantastic. They're, they're very, very uh, – uh, I hate the word tasteful when it comes to things like that because I've, I don't have taste, so I feel like it's a misuse <laughs> when I say it. But they're very uh, sensual without Thank being you. straight like – Here's my butt and boobs and everything like that. They're very, yeah. uh, they're very, they, they leave a lot to the elegant. imagination, but they still uh, grab. Yeah, elegant has a perfect word for it. Elegant, very elegant photos. Yeah, uh, the photographer I worked with, she's amazing. She's linked in all the photos. She's got a studio locally. She's over in uh, North Olmsted. We'll give her a so, shout out. Yeah, um, Paige Morellis photography so she does a lot of just normal you know your weddings your engagements your baby photos and then she does have pm boudoir so again so, women she's great to work with because you're not intimidated by a guy or anything so right yeah the, the intentions are pure exactly. which i think that's that's important because i also uh my ex-wife used to do some photography and mm -hmm. she did some weddings and stuff like that and she had one guy hire her to do some intimate photos and she thought it was going to be like george costanza on yeah. Seinfeld when he was doing those poses and stuff mm -hmm. like that and things got weird fast yeah. this is like right when me and her first started dating oh. and this guy got completely naked in this little tiny studio that she had she didn't really, oh. really know what she was doing yeah and went straight to like finger in his own butt and stuff like that and she was just oh. blown away yeah that's, and then he uh, was like, thank you so much, and paid in cash. So she's like, okay. Hey, yeah, yeah. As long as, you know, both people are cool with it, definitely maybe, like, go over those things with your photographer. But Yeah, uh, like, she knew he was going to get nude. I think the yeah when when he started exploring his bodies when she got a little weirded out. Yeah, that cool. definitely starts to go out of boudoir and more into, like, softcore porn. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think if there's a thing inserted in the butt, it's hardcore porn. It definitely crosses some lines. Yeah, if you're seeing it, and she yeah. saw it, and it was very, uh, she she decided from then that day on to always have an assistant with her. Yeah, uh, when she was doing photography. Yeah. Um, so yeah, your your photos are great. So you said you did some photos like that ten years ago, uh, and then you wanted to do it again just to kind of like see like if you still got it that kind of thing or. A little bit. Um, she was just starting to get into like boudoir photography and she was mm -hmm. like, hey, I know you've done this before. Would you mind if I use you as a guinea pig? And I was like, sure, I got nothing better to do. That's great. So then yeah. you get some free pictures. Yeah. And there now, how do you think that helps? Like, because we're living in an age where people are posting, you know, thirst traps and things like that constantly. But to have like a professional photographer take pictures of you and not just like send butt pics to random people like how do you how does that make you feel does that is it very empowering oh yeah it's extremely empowering because it's very different taking your picture and then having someone who like your ex-wife knows what they're doing and like mm -hmm. knows how to frame a good photo and get you in the right light and just make you look incredible like that's yeah. their job so then when you see the results you know you're like oh shit look at me yeah. i can do yeah. this I know, That's right? Awesome. Um, would you so you'd recommend to women to to maybe do this, maybe just like as your own empowerment? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a nice perk 
for mm. any significant other for sure like they love it yeah but just to get photos back where you feel the best you've ever felt you it's it's definitely a good thing to do on a personal level for sure and especially i think there's a lot of people that they'll go through you know the, their transformation where they lost a bunch of weight or something like that or maybe they're just they just had a baby or something they're they're mm -hmm. they're, they're maybe not feeling their best or they, they're feeling the best they felt in a long time I think going to a, a professional photographer and having them kind of capture that is a pretty solid idea. Absolutely. No, it's, it's definitely important just to do something for yourself like that every now and then, like, and they're the right person to do it. It's not you in your bathroom with Snapchat right. trying to figure it out. Like that's now I, I, when I was at my thinnest, I would definitely do like photo shoots of myself, like, being able to fit into clothes that I'd never been able to fit into before. Oh, yeah. And I felt pretty good about that. Uh, the other side of that is, though, now when I look at those, I go, oh, boy, did I let myself get right back to where I was. And that's, yeah. a, that's a little, you go, ah, well, at least I have those memories. I wish I had sure. gone to more. Uh, I had a few professional pictures taken when I was skinny, but uh, I wish I had more, to be honest. Not yeah. not necessarily a boudoir set, but what's the equivalent for, like, what what would a woman like to see? Um, like I mean, definitely guy. the definitely the George Costanza look. Yeah. Long recliner, tidy whities like for sure. That does it. I believe um, he was wearing boxers, but I could be wrong. Maybe I think they were white boxers. I think you're correct. Okay. I think you're. Yeah, I think they were white boxers. Oh, there goes the recycling truck. Sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 out there, but this is you know, this is the world the we city. live in where it's more important to social distance than yeah. to uh, you know. In have a little person. background noise and it, and it gives some authenticity a little bit of grit to the podcast exactly. usually my dog is barking in the background so uh that, but she's that's, cute so it's worth she's it. cute but you can't see her so when she's barking she's just fucking annoying and i have somebody <laughs> comment on one of my recent episodes and he's like can you close the door so we can't hear your dog and i'm like my do door was closed and then yeah. sometimes the dog's in the room just wandering around she's part of the show it's part of the exactly. show and she's a puppy. She's going to do what she wants anyway. Oh, yeah. She is. Do you have dogs? No, no. We live in an apartment. So once mm. we get a house, we yeah. have cats, though. Well, that's that's why I went with a, a smaller dog because I have my condo and I wanted mm -hmm. something. Uh, but she has been, uh, she just got fixed and everything. And she's on the other side of that now where at first she was real rambunctious after she got oh, fixed yeah. because we couldn't exercise her. But now she's, you know, getting back into a routine and everything like that. Good. And, uh, she's she's doing really well and she's uh she's just a little shit though she she really has like a like she acts very good around everybody else but then when it's just like me and her or me and her and my girlfriend she is just a punk because she can get away with it yeah, exactly she knows that's yeah. like a kid, I feel like. Like, they're really well-behaved around everyone else. And then it's like, as soon as they're just with mom and dad, like, game over. Absolutely. And she likes to dig in the plants. So I had to put them all up on, like, different things because she was trying to get into them all the time. So I'm going to blame and her she, for the death of that one. That's fair. And she's just going to get bigger. So she, you're going to have to, like, continually get higher and higher things. Yes. Yes. And <laughs> Well, she's actually pretty close to full grown now. Really? So I think she's not a, a super big... uh dog she's a she's a petite golden doodle okay yeah i so knew she was a doodle she, yeah she's a petite golden doodle and they stay pretty small so she's about 15 pounds yesterday she went over to uh, my girlfriend's mom's house and got spoiled so oh, i swear she took three dumps this morning and they were gigantic <laughs> and oh. she lost like five pounds i was blown away a two-bagger i was like yeah. what is going on with this dog yeah. and she just she to see a dog look relieved is very funny. It is. Any sort of animal, yeah, after something like that, it's enjoyable because you're like, been there. Know that yeah. feeling, man. Yeah. So, but like to see like that look on their face when they're a dog and be like, they're like, I was holding a lot in and uh, yeah. now it's much, much better. So, for sure. Uh, she's, she's very cute and she's a, she's a lot of fun. Um, you live with your boyfriend. What was his response to the, uh, you, you kind of mentioned this, but, when you showed him the boudoir photos, how was he? Was he just like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. He loved them. And again, it's like he knew that was something I'd done before. Mm -hmm. So he's seen them from when I was like 22, 23. So it was nice to be able to be like, hey, look, I still look 
pretty, pretty good. That's awesome. And um, what would you, uh, as far as like a relationship plant, what's a good relationship plant to have? If you're like moving in with somebody or taking the next step, what would, uh, a, and I know this is random, but what's a good plant to like have together and like symbolizes something uh, like we're together now? Um, Maybe like a money tree, a pachyra. There you go. Um, I didn't even know money trees. Okay. Oh, money. yeah. I was going to say, it's supposed to be, it's like an old, you know, Chinese lore. It brings you prosperity and, okay. and wealth. And I mean, what better for a new relationship? That's that's perfect. What's this one that's behind you uh, that's kind of like got some purple in it? This guy? This is, yeah. I believe, a trichoderma. Okay. Not 100% sure. Not great with that. I feel like plant names are a little too difficult. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're, they're all very scientific -y, So, mm -hmm. like, that, that one should be called, like, purple green guy or something like that like something like it's the Hulk. probably got a name like that i yeah. just don't know them because like i have to know like the scientific names yeah. and like the official selling names so yeah people are like oh hey i have this what do i do and i'm like i don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> well uh, they're like oh you get paid to do that right and i'm like yeah let's not talk about that well well thank you so much for for being on the podcast of people course. can find you on uh uh Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Instagram at Ash Gomez. Very simple. Very simple. And uh, she's got some of her boudoir photos up there, some plant photos. Uh, she's pretty funny. And uh, I, 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 it, you're a good follow. I followed you back and uh, we, we've had some fun interactions over the years. Oh, for sure. Uh, and, and thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me. This is the Bill Squire Show.